A lot of people tend to do is they like these band exercises. Thoracic spine, so our upper back is meant to flex. Hi guys, I'm Kayla Lee. I'm a physiotherapist from Australia and an online coach. I also teach a course in applied women's physiology and training. And today we're gonna to be going over how to train your glutes most effectively. We're gonna go through everything from mobility, activation, and through the most effective warm up to hit all muscle fibers of the glutes. So guys, we're going through a couch stretch first. When we're training the glutes, the glute is the strongest hip extender. So we wanna make sure that we're able to get into good hip extension when we're going through our glutes. So we're just doing a couch stretch here. Hold for 20 to 30 seconds. Really stretch through the front and get through that hip extension. A really good exercise for the start of a leg day. The hip has three ranges of motion, so we wanna make sure we are mobilizing into three ranges of motion of the hip before our lower body workouts. So we can you know, get, be able to get into good positions where we can put the most tension across our glutes when we work out. So the glutes are also a really strong external rotator of the hip. So we want to make sure that we're getting into that position of external rotation of the hip as well. So just doing a pigeon stretch, holding for 20 to 30 seconds. So some of the muscle fibers of the glutes are also abductors of the hip. So what we're doing is stretching our adductors here. So on the inside to make sure we're able to get into that abducted position when we're training our glutes. Okay guys, so three rounds of that of the mobility work and then we're gonna move into a little bit more stability work, working the proprioception of our glutes. So what is often seen, we do have three different glutes. We have the glute max, which is a big hip extender and external rotator. So that's for movement, it's really powerful muscle. And it's the one we often look at to you know, grow in our training. We also have two smaller glutes. So those are more stabilizers of the hip. They help with keeping our pelvis stable and straight. And so those are the ones we're sort of looking at to work when we're doing these um, stability warm-ups as well. To make sure that, you know, we have a stable pelvis, we're able to put more tension along that glute max muscle, um, as well as avoid any injuries that may occur, you know, further down the chain in the hips and knees as well. Often what I see for people activating the glutes is popping a band around their legs and just sort of like doing these crab walks or doing some clams or something like that. It's not actually training our stabilizing glute muscles in the way that we want to. The way that we want to train them, the adaptation that we're looking for, is for it to keep a stable pelvis as we sort of move forward in motion. So walking lunges is gonna get us on one leg, kind of an unstable position, and we gotta, you know, sort of reactively make sure that we're able to you know, maintain that position of the pelvis as we move forward. Next stability exercise that we're gonna go through is a side plank. Now this is a great stabilizing exercise, not only for our glutes, but also for our core. So any lower body exercises, we want to stabilize our core as well before we work out. All right guys, so the first exercise we're gonna go through is a barbell hip thrust. Now, we're gonna use the Smith machine today just because I feel like it's a little bit easier to get into. But a common misconception about the barbell hip thrust is that it is the be all and end all exercise for glute training. Now, this isn't necessarily true. So, there's a difference between tension and load. To grow a muscle, we wanna put tension along the muscle fibers. And it doesn't necessarily equal load. The barbell hip thrust, we can load really heavy, but we're not necessarily isolating the glutes. We can use a lot of quads and hamstrings in the movement as well. And it's also a really small range of the glute muscle range of motion that we're actually going through. So it's a very shortened range of the glute muscle. So there are definitely exercises we can use to 
train different ranges of the glutes and put tension along those muscle fibers in different ways. But I wanted to show you how to perform a barbell hip thrust correctly in case you want to use it in your programming, you know, every now and then, not sort of all the time, but um, it's definitely a good tool in the toolbox that can be used to grow your glutes because, you know, we want to get that powerful hip extension and we are able to load it heavy. Yeah, so notice guys how when I get to the top of the range, I'm sort of pausing a little bit. That's where there's most tension on the glutes. So I wanna spend more time in that top position. Also thinking with our hip extension, a posterior pelvic tilt of the pelvis. So tucking that tailbone under is gonna get maximum contraction of the glutes as well. All right guys, so second exercise we're gonna go through is a leg press. So with the hip thrust, we worked a really shortened range of the glute. We wanna hit a little bit more of a lengthened range of the glute now. So a little bit more hip flexion to get more of a stretch on that glute and then not so much hip extension, but still extending the hip on the leg press. Um, I'm gonna show you a way that we can stabilize ourselves internally with our core muscles on the leg press that's going to avoid any low back pain or anything you might experience on the leg press as well. So we want to have our feet a little bit higher, a little bit turned out, toes turned out, so that's going to give us a little bit more external rotation of the hip because remember the glutes are an external rotator, is we're going to make sure that our rib cage stays down. A lot of people just sit back in the seat and just press and press and press. And it's like, we want to make sure that our rib cage is down, our core is on, our pelvis is staying into the seat. So often you see when people come into this shortened range is you see the pelvis tuck under like this, the lower back starts to flex on the seat and that can be, you know, a recipe for disaster for the lower back. So we want to hold onto the handles, make sure our pelvis is anchored into the seat. So pulling down, keeping our rib cage down, our core is on to protect our lower back. So I really like the 45 degree back extension to work a little bit more mid range of the glutes. It's a little bit more plain specific for the glutes and really good for putting tension along the muscle fibers. So the way that I do it is set my feet up so they're a little bit externally rotated again to hit those externally rotated fibers. And then as you sort of lean over, what you want to think about, what I commonly see is people coming up with their chest first. What you want to do is you want to create that thoracic flexion through the upper back, really tuck your rib cage down and you know engage the pelvis and the core and then come up and really squeeze the glutes you're going to feel a big contraction through here keeping that thoracic spine rounded is going to disadvantage those lumbar extensors so you're going to feel the contraction more in your glutes here if you wanted to load this up because it is more of a body weight exercise you can use a band, for example, around your back, or you can also hold onto a dumbbell and then do a drop set where you, you know, use extra resistance and then drop it and then go to failure with your body weight. All right, step ups are a great unilateral exercise for activation of the glutes, right? Because we're getting a lot of hip extension through this exercise. Now, to progress the step up, you can always start with, you know, no weight. You can start with a lower bench. Um, then you can also progress with unilateral weights as well, which is going to help stabilize the core and the glutes a little bit more because you're sort of a little bit lopsided. So, ipsilateral weight, same side, stepping up or contralateral weight, opposite side, stepping up. Or we can go bilateral, both sides with the weights as well, which is gonna give us you know, a little bit more load. At the top, what we wanna think about is posteriorly tilting the pelvis to get that full contraction of the glute up the top. So now we're gonna go into some cable abductions. What a lot of people tend to do is they like these band exercises for the abductions, which, you know, the glute medius, like I spoke about before, its function is to stabilize the pelvis. But if you're an aesthetic competitor and you really wanna grow this muscle, uh, then we need to put adequate tension along it. So a cable is a better resistance profile than a band, for example, because the band kind of gets harder as you go out and easier as you get in the tension isn't 
isn't linear. So with the cable, the tension is gonna be linear throughout the entire movement. So you can put better tension along, along the glute med to actually grow and give yourself, you know, those nice rounded looking glutes. What I like about this as well is you can actually feel the glute med on that stabilizing leg working as well. Like you'll, you'll feel that burn as it tries to stabilize. I also think about pushing into the cable as I bring my leg out because the, the cable is trying to pull me back in. So I want to push against it to create that counter force so I'm stronger in my outward push. So guys, if there are any other body parts or women specific training that you want to see from me, leave a comment in the section below. Like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one.